side of a cow from the wonder stuff, the man who wrote it and sang it, Miles Hunt, will be in the second half of the show. And talking of great songwriters, time now to hear from multi-platinum selling songwriter Laura Pergolizzi. She's had an incredible career after being signed and dropped by not one, not two, but three major record labels. The New York singer, simply known as LP, had almost given up in life as an artist. She became instead a songwriter, penning hits for many people, including the Backstreet Boys, Cher, Christina Aguilera and Rihanna. Then, a surprise hit in Greece led to huge success. Soon the song was charting Italy, Sweden, France, Poland, Belarus, Israel. At one point, it was the fourth most Shazam song in the world. Now her hotly anticipated fifth album is about to be released on December the 7th. She's been talking to afternoon show producer Ian Boffey, starting with how she came up with the title, Heart to Mouth. I was doing an interview, actually, and... They were asking me how songs come about, like writing-wise, and how I do it or what I look for. And I said one of the most important things that I really look for, is, especially melodically when I lay down melodies, it's usually in the first or second pass of trying melodies out to the music we've written or whatever, and I, I always feel like I can feel the direct line, you know, whether it's my soul or my heart, but I felt like it's just like from my heart to my mouth as far as like my emotions. And I just said something like that, and I felt like it was a a cool title, an apt title. You touch on the writing process there, and I'm interested in what it is like for you because it's got a big sound, but the lyrics are so intimate. Is it a solitary process, writing for you? Yeah, it's a tough one sometimes too because, you know, I noticed like this record, you know, I was writing about things that happened in the past from past lovers and, you know, people in my life, but it's hard to write about your current lover and when you're with someone, you know, and possibly addressing possible problems or things that make you sad, you know. I do like the juxtaposition of having intimate lyrics with, like, big melodic themes, you know. The latest single, Recovery, is a a perfect example of that sort of intimacy and honesty, I suppose. Before we hear it, what can you tell us about this song? This song was actually written a few years ago, and it was more about my ex-ex. I left that particular relationship, and I felt like they needed me to leave them alone, you know. I was writing it from her perspective and to, like, stay out of her, you know, way for a while just so she could, like, get over it. And I was just trying to think from her place, and, you know, it's like a kind of, not silly, but it's like, feels like, you know, like the kind of how dare you, you know, even think in my place. But then it happened to me and it actually rang true. So, I, you know, I was on the other side of that equation and, and I was like, oh, wow, you know, that is how it is. You just need to break that addiction. Recovery from LP taken from her latest album, Heart to Mouth. We've touched on on the writing, of course, but that song has a terrific vocal performance. And I understand that your mother was a singer too. Is that really where the musical genes come from? Yeah, you know, I I think so. Um, You know, I mean, I I can feel and hear similarities in the timbre of our voices, you know, even though, unfortunately, you know, I can't compare them. I can just remember her singing for me and definitely feel that and can hear it. Did she inspire you growing up? I mean, did you admire her as a singer? Yeah, I did, and I thought it was really cool. I was kind of shy, more of a sports-type kid, and I always thought it was so wild, and then I I think it made me want to do it, you know, because it seemed like it totally didn't come from, like, an entertainment-type family, you know, like... You can't believe it's possible or something, you know? Mm. But was a career in music on your mind, even as a kid, was that on your mind? I wished it could be, but it was so like, yeah, right, like that's impossible. I don't I wouldn't even know where to begin, you know. I still don't know where to begin, but I definitely didn't know where to begin when I, you know, several years later decided to go for it. But presumably there was loads of music around the house and instruments mm-hmm. too, I'd imagine. Uh, piano, yeah, but, um, and I wish I'd kept up with piano, but it was just like one of those things, I wanted to play guitar, and like a lot of kids, you know, I feel like 
other people can probably relate to this. I felt like because I didn't practice piano as much as my parents would have liked me to because they got me lessons for a little while when I was a kid. Because I didn't practice that, I think they were like, you're not going to practice guitar, so we're not going to get you a guitar kind of thing. And I don't agree with that. I think that, you know, if, if your kid has a, you know, if they know what they want, then, you know, like my parents are the kind of parents that like, you know, you tell them, hey, I want to play the trumpet. They're like, no, play the clarinet. It's like, you never practiced your clarinet. It's like, yeah, because I wanted to play trumpet, hmm. you know. It's like <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> I don't know why parents do that. It's like, what? It, what is the point of that? Famously, you play the ukulele, and uh, I mean, I suppose it seems such an unlikely instrument for a songwriter. <laughs> you know, I mean. Just... Oh, I think it's a it's it's a very well. I wouldn't say likely, but it's so easy. Like you know, it's so off the cuff. Like that's why I started playing it because, you know, I I thought my artist career was over when I started playing ukulele. It was just for me. Do you write with the ukulele? Mm-hmm. I do often because also it's like, like I said, it, there's a subtlety to the instrument and a a delicacy that I feel allows other things to come through. And it's just easier and it's um, just something that I can begin on ukulele. And I don't know, it's almost like it's like those um, quiet, gentle people that make you start like spewing your um, deepest, darkest emotions and thoughts. You know, the ukulele does that. It's like, it's like, hey, what are you thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> but listen, let's get back to the new album. This single arrives on the heels of uh, Girls Go Wild, which we're going to hear now as well. A different kind of song, uh, but there's so many different shades on the album. What can you tell us about this one? This is one of the first songs I really wrote for this album, and I feel like it was interesting that it was released first, and it's still, like, it's still kind of going, I think. It's, like, you know, hasn't really officially, officially been released. It was just the first thing we, like, kind of let out into the ether, like a soft kind of release, as they say. (laughs) I feel like it's a palate cleanser for me from the last album to this album, where it's like, okay, you know, here's something different, kind of shake things up a little bit before you get a bunch of other material thrown at you. Girls Go Wild from LP, taken from her latest album, Heart to Mouth. Such a cool video for that song as well. You're wearing a kind of Elvis-style gold lamy jacket. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I'm interested in who inspires you. Was he a big influence? Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. In fact, I have a jacket I've been like wearing recently for this next like album cycle that is very Elvis to me and like kind of Johnny Cash. Like, I love all that. My dad listened to that kind of stuff. He liked all these stuff and... That time period of singers really spoke to me. I think that time, like when Elvis came about, from what I've read and seen and heard, it's just like, it was like this birth of real like rock and roll swagger, I guess, you know? There could never be, especially look-wise, another Elvis, and it's just like, he just... um had a thing obviously that just spoke to people spoke Mm. to women and uh and men alike i think um in a way so i always find um his vibe inspiring for sure what do you hope and and what do you think people take away from your work is it that emotional resonance that connection for sure you know i wanted to speak to them even if they don't understand the language or even if they do understand the language but they don't really know what I'm actually talking about uh, truly, but like that they can take something and, in their own life and use it in a, whatever way they want, you know, to inspire them to, you know, make them move, make them, um, you know, make love, be happy, whatever it is, you know. It's like it's such a cool way to be involved with people's lives without even knowing it you know like i'll never i'll never know all the scenarios you know musicians will never know all the scenarios in which our music is Mm -hmm. you know used and you know i'm sure we would be scared of some of them (laughs) (laughs) lp talking there to this program's producer ian boffey her lovely new album heart to mouth is available on december the 7th